What's up? I'm Henry. I'm Matt. We're Survey Says, and you're watching CT Music Videos Hollow. Yes. All right. This is CT Music Videos. We're here with Survey Says. Can you guys just tell us your names and what you do in the band? Yeah, I'm Henry. Uh, I play guitar and sing, and I'm the manager guy. And uh, hi, I'm Matthew. I play the bass. Yeah. Very he's, cool. our, he's our new guy. Any any followers of our band knows that the, the bass player position in our band is very much like the the, the drummer's final tap. Yeah, the drummer's <laughs> final tap, or the uh, defense against the dark arts teacher in Harry Potter. <laughs> Different every time, yeah. but he may stink, so we'll see what happens. <laughs> Hopefully, I don't combust by the time this video goes live. <laughs> yeah, you never know. Do so you guys have any favorite TV shows? Wow, you you hit me with the hard stuff first. <laughs> wow, yeah. I'm, I'm about television, so. Uh, my favorite television show of all time is Buffy the Vampire Slayer, um, with Angel being a close second. Um, I like anything Joss Whedon, uh, so Dollhouse, Firefly, anything of that. I mean, I like Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., but I prefer his original stuff. Uh, my favorite cartoon, like children's cartoon, like from way back, is Rocko's Modern Life. Nice. And uh, it's a toss-up between that and SpongeBob. It's tough, but um, I'm trying to think of my favorite show right now. I got my favorite show right now is like Bob's Burgers. Bob's Burgers. Bob's okay. Burgers is my favorite. Your uh, Facebook is uh, is uh, is from that. Yeah, my, my profile picture is Gene playing guitar. So mm -hmm. it's uh, yeah. yeah. So I, I'll let I'll let you hop in with that too. Real quick, uh, my favorite TV show of all time is probably a tie between Boy Meets World and Chappelle Show. Alright. And Hell yeah. yeah, my favorite show that's currently on the air, well until midnight will be The Daily Show. Uh, oh, man. oh yeah, that's yeah. right. After that. It's a sad day it is. right now. Yeah. It is It is August 6th, 2015 and it's the last day of The Daily Show and that's really upsetting. It is. But uh, after today, I'd say uh, after that Rick and Morty is my favorite okay. show right now. Yeah, like Rick and Morty on Adult Swim. I gotta check that out. I don't know. Dude, love it. It's Dan Harmon. It's a cartoon. The premise is like Back to the Future, a little more twisted though. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah, we hit the important shit first. <laughs> mm -hmm. Nice. One more important question. Yeah, that was the abridged version. I mean, we could. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what we do. <laughs> this is what we do. So. Yeah. Uh, another another fun question, and we'll dive deep. Any celebrity lookalikes between you two? Um. My band uh, calls him Corey sometimes, so it looks like Ben Savage from Boy yeah. World. Um, I do get Ben Savage a lot. Uh, sometimes Shia LaBeouf, but only from even Stevens. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Only Shia LaBeouf. Yeah. Or Holes. That's important. Yeah. Also a great show. Oh, great show. I love yeah. even Stevens. Oh, no. Disney show? Back then? Like, yeah. like that's so Raven. Like, so uh, Disney like, Wire? Like, oh, dude! <laughs> shows are awesome, man. Perfect, yeah. That's so good back then. Anyway, what oh yeah, um, so uh, I get, I, sometimes I get, I don't know how famous he is, but sometimes people think I'm related to Joe Ragosta of Patent Pending, and sometimes because of my hair, people think I look like Claudio from Coheed. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, I not only really look like Claudio, but like, I guess they just equate the, the, the big head yeah. of hair to that, I guess. Um, it's very metal hair. I, I, yeah, I guess it, it would be. I'm not a very not a very metal band, but yeah. yeah. And uh, and uh, Tito from Rocket Power. That's probably the other thing. Look like that's it. Cool. Yeah. All right. Well, you guys spend a lot of time on the road. What advice do you, would you give to newer bands trying to tour? Uh. Well. Well, you <laughs> this is Matt's first long tour, so okay. I think I'm gonna disqualify So you're talking you. to him. I'm gonna. Um, this is, what this you is for you. This is yeah. for you. Um, what's up, snare drum? Uh, with so many different aspects you could go for, because like you know, some bands are worried about money, some bands are worried about comfort, some bands are. I'd say. How will I survive this tour? That's probably in general. How will you? How will I survive on this tour? It's different. I know you. You know me. So it could, it could be real specific. Yeah, you. Can so like, on a, I'll, I'll be general. Stay I'll away be. from cats. Well, yeah, you're you're like allergic to everything, and you're right. vegan. It's tough. I can't really, I can't really help with that. But in a in a general sense, I'd say, you need to, you need to figure out what your comfort zone is, 
and then get rid of it. Um, you need to you need to constantly challenge yourself to handle new situations and handle new uh, uh, challenges, uh, you know, different kinds of like, obstacles. And it's not like big life affirming stuff. It's like, can I swear? Yeah. Okay. It's not life affirming shit. It's just like uh, I got a few words saying stuff. Is that weird? Um, it's not like huge things that'll happen. It's just like okay, we gotta sleep on this floor. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta do some weird shit. We gotta do this weird drive. Like, weird things will happen. You'll have to, you know, you'll encounter people that you didn't think you'd encounter, and you have to, you have to test your own boundaries over and over again. Like, I've been doing this a long time, and you know, I'm, I'm relieved when I don't get too comfortable because then I know that I'm being relaxed. I'm not challenging myself, and it's just every day. A lot, at least most every day, you will you will find new things you need to tackle about yourself, about your band, about your friends, about your relationships, and uh, you just need to toss out your comfort zone and be open to the idea that anything can happen, good or bad. And you need to. One last thing, generally, is that you need to focus on the good. You can't you can't overwhelm yourself with things that are just not going the right way or or things that don't go the way you think it would be, your expectations are bullshit. So it's like, that was good. Um, you have to, you have to be able to count your blessings at the, at the end of the night and just, and just like, accept things for what they are and make that be enough for you to keep going. If, if it comes to a point where the good you're accomplishing is not enough to keep you going, then you should stop because then you're either going to bring yourself out or you're going to do something irresponsible or you're going to hurt somebody around you or something like that. It can boil up and become real bad. So always be happy with what it is you're doing. If you feel like you're not happy at that point, you should stop. And, uh... Yeah, I could go on. No, I tried to make that. Cool. I tried to make that as general as no, I could. That's great, man. But yeah. yeah, get the big picture plan in there. Yeah, I don't have really anything to say about that. <laughs> Outside of, don't reinvent the wheel. Learn from those who have done it. There you go. Yeah. Cool. All right. So you guys are signed to Asbestos Records. You've played a lot of huge shows and festivals. To what do you attribute your success, and what advice do you give to bands trying to accomplish those same things? Um, I attribute Survey Says is, Survey Says is, uh, Survey Says Success, Success, I don't know yet, um, well, what no one can take away from me at the end of the day is like, my, you know, music is subjective, you're gonna like it, you're not gonna like it, I can't make you like our band, but, I can't, you can't, <laughs> I mean, it's like, you can't take away numbers, like uh, the the where I find my success is mostly what I can objectify. So we did this much this year. We sold this many records. We did this many shows. We appeared in these many states with this band. Da, da, da. So like you can't. No matter what, at the end of the day, you can't take that away from me. So I that's where I find our successes. And I feel like, um, you know, we we didn't come into this business knowing somebody or having any political hand up that a lot of people have. I'm not complaining, it's just the way that the music industry works. It's just that a lot of people who know... A lot of people who know... playing a Rancid song. Yeah, Rancid won't yeah, be there if it wasn't yeah. for Alpha Ivy. You know, it's just like, a lot of people have a leg up in terms of their relationships. I came into this with nothing. So, my business model from there on out was, well, let's just be everywhere all the time. They can't avoid us if we're everywhere. They're not going to, you know, we'll do everything we can to get noticed within the realm of being, you know, uh with integrity um, so we just tour all the time and that's what it is it's you know we just we just work our asses off and get in people's ears as much as possible and uh, I think that that model has worked for us I don't know I can't say for a fact that it would work for another band because every band my band evolves a lot like you know because it, it does have its drawbacks it's not as easy as it sounds like like the bass thing was a joke earlier, but that's a downside for what we do, is that it's tough to keep everybody together for so long and to, to, to keep this going the way it is. You know, we have a lot of turnaround. Um, so I can't say for certain that it would work for everybody involved, but it worked for us. So a band needs to, like I said before, take the good with their bad and realize what works for them. If touring a lot works for your band, great. 
if it doesn't, that doesn't mean you don't have to be a band anymore. It just means you need to have your model be what is right for your band. So. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, also, all right. Uh, one last question. What is the best and or worst gig you've ever played? Matt's been in other bands, so I'll let him go first. I've never been in another, any other band, but survey says. Um, well, I'd say the best gig is always the... Can I be cheesy? I'll say the next one. Alright. All right. Uh, uh, actually, well, okay, let's get down to it. Best gig ever was probably um, when you played that dream venue, the first one, one of the ones that you started your band for. For me, it was the Starland Ballroom. Uh, I was about 17 or 16 years old when I first played it in Sayreville, New Jersey. And I remember being at a Catch-22 show when I was 14 and vowing to play there someday. So when I did that, that was definitely one of the more fun shows I ever got to play. Worst gig ever. Um, do you want to say your best first? I don't want to meditate on what the worst gig ever was. No, you got that. You got it. All right. I'm still thinking. So yeah. Sorry, I'm gonna go for it. Okay. Yeah, I tried to throw you down there. I have, no, I have, a, I have a lot to go through. <laughs> that was just such a big one because, I mean, I don't even know if... It was a, it was a nice gig, achieving your goals and stuff. Yeah. Was that um, Far Away Boys or Feeny? That was Far Away Boys. Cool. Yeah. I'm gonna do two best gigs instead of a worst one. Okay. okay? Yeah. Because I can't think there's been a lot of shit. That's good. Um, best one, people wise, like biggest crowd was a show in Kansas City with Real Big Fish. It was like a free show, and there was three thousand people there, and I've never played in front of that big of a crowd before. It was just nice. acting crazy. Um, the best one, like a best feeling I ever had, uh, we had just put out our our uh, record like two or three years ago, and it had, and it had been out maybe. A week and a half. So we played like the release show in Jersey. It was like a house show, and kids knew the words already. So like the the feeling you get when people are actually listening. Like it's one thing you'll play shows, your friends show up, yeah, and we party. But, but like I want the, the, the best is when they actually connect with what you're saying, and they fucking did. It was just you know and that record. Nobody had heard those songs prior to five days before that show, and. They're in my face. It's like that big thing. It was like just, just crazy. And I know there's like awesome gigs in between there too. But like just off the top of my head, those nice. those came to mind. So okay. worst gigs. That's fine. You'll remember the bad gigs. Yeah. I try to block it out. I do my best. I mean, I do remember, but it's just this why why bother? That, you know, I like that. So, I like that mentality. Dude. What's up? I'm Henry. I'm Matt. And you're. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you should have just kept the fucking uh, I, one. I, I still right. have it, but right. CT music videos. No, no, I forgot my band's name. <laughs> <laughs>